Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is September 7th. It's my weekly shop update. Well, it's been a little while. I've been gone for a couple of weeks here. It's been uh, a little bit hectic, I guess. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, I went down to visit April in her new shop. I spent a few days there with Triton as well, and we did a few videos together while we were there. Uh, April and I did a video on making some shop stools or shop seats for some shop stools I should be putting in her shop and that'll be on her channel at some point whenever she finishes up with those. And then Triton did a video of us making a paint can kind of storage rack thing, which is pretty sweet. And I think Triton's going to have a couple other videos as well. Because after that, we all went to IWF, which was a really fun show. It's just cool to see that side of things, like CNC machines bigger than my shop, stuff like that kind of big. And you can see like a lot of like the stuff from the whole industry flowing through like some really specific products and things like the booth across from the Triton booth was a company that built motors specifically for use in kilns. It's that's pretty specific, but that's the kind of stuff you'll find there. But big thank you to everyone who came out to the show, stopped by the Triton booth, said hi to me in April and hung out for a bit and just talked to us. It was just a lot of fun to, as always, meet everybody, put some faces to some names and, uh, all that stuff too, and thank you to everyone who came out to the meetup at Highland Woodworking on that Thursday. That was very fun as well. So I got back last week, and then like I think we had like some kind of sickness going through the house. So like I got back, and like Max was sick with some kind of cold thing, and then Lindsay was sick with the same thing, and I got it, and our nanny got it. So she's been out sick for a few days too. So it's been a whole lot of me spending time with the kids, which I am not complaining about by any means. <laughs> so. Let me give you a bit of an update about what's going on in the shop with some projects here and I have a few other smaller things to catch you up on as well. So in the shop I've been moving along with the sideboard. I added the vertical dividers to the frame so that's going to be the last little bit of framework on the actual case and now I can move on to doing the panels. But those vertical dividers go in with a double through mortise and tenon which was kind of a fun thing to cut. Not super complicated by any means, but just kind of makes it a little more snazzier. And by breaking it up into two tenons like that, you'll leave some structure in the horizontal divider, which that vertical divider is intersecting into. So with that kind of out of the way, I started getting into the panels. So I have my panel stock here. These are going to be, the panels are going to be, uh, these are the two door panels. And then these are the other two door panels here. And then the other panel from that set is going to be either of the side panels, which I think is going to look pretty cool. So I have some really uh, impressive double crotch figure that's going to wrap its way around the case, and it should look pretty sweet. So, for instance, let's see how this goes like that. So this will be, I don't know, whatever side, a pair of the door panels. So we'll have that kind of going on for the doors. I think that's gonna look pretty ridiculously awesome. Seeing all of this come together should be pretty cool. So, those all got re out of the, the bigger blocks that I had for those. Did that here on the indoor bandsaw, and then I have the panels that are gonna make up the back of the case. Those are a little wider, they're like 13 and a half, 14 inches wide. So I cut those out on the outdoor bandsaw, and uh, that went pretty well, except for the fact that I forgot to uh, tension the blade. So the cut quality wasn't perfect, or nowhere near perfect. Pretty jagged, like that. But that's what happens when you don't put tension on the blade, I guess. The blade can kind of vibrate and tear it up a little bit, but I still have enough thickness here to plane away all those saw marks, and it shouldn't be any kind of issue at all. But uh, yeah, tension your bandsaw blades. It cuts a lot better. <laughs> I also got out here on Wednesday and I cut up that log that I had shown in my last shop update. This one was the one that had a lot of that dry rot in it. So a lot of the slabs like from here up have a ton of dry rot in the middle, but it didn't really seem to matter a whole lot because you still have some good usable material to the outside. So at least there's something there. And the first few slabs off this thing looked pretty good. So I'm certainly not complaining. And being out here cutting anything on the saw, just being off my butt makes me pretty happy. This certainly beats 
any of the days where I have to sit inside and edit for the whole day. So that ah, doesn't really matter, even though it's not like the best looking stuff ever. Uh, actually, it's really nice looking stuff if you're like really into epoxy and stabilizing and stuff like that. Otherwise, it has some nice smaller sections of material that you could use for some other kind of project. But uh, again, just kind of a fun adventure to get these things cut up and see what's inside. You don't know what's inside until you cut it up. So that's what I've been up to. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week are a set of planter boxes by Brian. Brian made these boxes for his wife to dress up those cheap plastic planters you get at the garden center. The boxes are made from redwood with simple dado and groove joints. The legs are made of pressure treated lumber and painted and the redwood is finished with an outdoor oil poly mostly to add some gloss. Next this week is a bookshelf by Adam. Adam is 15 years old and he built this bookshelf for his sister. It's made out of pine and the top is walnut. The pine came from an old window and his dad helped him mill up the walnut. Next this week are office boxes by Josh. The first one is made from live edge maple that he milled from a tree his friend cut down. The bottom of the box is made from a scrap piece of zebra wood. The second box is made to hold his keys, wallet, and pen while sitting at his desk. It's made from reclaimed walnut and the maple accents are made from a scrap from the other box. Last this week is a crib by Don. Don built this crib for his latest granddaughter. The frame is made from pecan and the spindles are made from maple. And you can find more of Don's work over on Facebook. So I have a few smaller things to mention as well. I didn't have a chance to really get out and do any filming at IWF. I'm just too busy, I guess. But uh, Jay Bates on his second channel has a few videos. He has a couple vlogs from when he was there as well as a summary video. So if you want more, more information about what's going on at IWF, definitely check out Jay's second channel. I'll have, well, I'll have a link to that down below. Next up, <laughs> this outfit table. It is in the, what is this? The October issue of Woodworkers Journal. So I wrote this article back when I made the outfit table. This is actually kind of cool because it doesn't really go into a whole lot of the construction details because that's what the video is for. That's what the plans are for. So there's a lot of like considerations to you know, kind of keep in mind as you're designing an outfit table for your space. So I got a nice little six page spread in there. Uh, Woodworkers Journal did a nice job with the, the layout. So I did all the pictures, but they did all the layout work as well as put together the plans for this project. So if you want the plans or anything like that, the plans are available for free on their website as well. One thing I forgot to mention about a month ago, I was on the Made for Profit podcast if you want to check that out, I will have a link down in the description. That was a lot more kind of like behind the scenes and the whole like, I guess the business side of things that you don't normally see, I guess. But if you're interested in that, links to that will be with everything down there. <laughs> and then lastly, a quick update on the sawmill plans. Uh, Dima and I are putting together the final revisions of the last version. So once we have those together, that will be done. And then everyone who ordered the, the print version with the swag pack, they'll be shipping out as well. Um, and that's going to be taken down from the sales page in over the weekend. So probably on Monday will be the last day you could ever buy that printed version with all the stuff with it. So if you've been kind of putting that off, or you want that still, check that out. When that revision is done, I will be increasing the price on the plans. So if you've been thinking about buying them for some reason and you haven't, you're, they're never going to be as cheap as they are now. <laughs> so you have uh, a few more days for that if, you're, if you've been kind of putting it off. Um, I think that's about all I have this week. Thank you, as always, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.